does. And it does. It says there we live. Go. There we go. Yay. All we're right. We made one. it this far. We have made it this far. We're doing well. Welcome to hey, the everyone. Jamboree. <laughs> That'd be the Jamie and Amber happy hour. Here we go. <laughs> yep. Grab your waters and hopefully everybody's warm and cozy and safe. Yeah, and we know you were expecting to hear the marvelous Amy Mauser um, in her fireside chat talking about her article and the spread that she has in our December issue. Unfortunately, um, Jamie, um, thank you for answering that, Jamie. So you can wave to the comments while I yammer on. I will, yep. But uh, Amy was not feeling well and not able to be on, so um, uh, we got this harebrained idea to take over. <laughs> the live and we really have no point to what we're talking about but we're here to answer questions and we're just going to yammer on about cardamancy and uh the magazine and divination mm -hmm. and jamie has some fun jingly asmr over there to work with us hello pamela yep hi and, everybody um, yeah so please you know shoot us some questions if you have any and um there we go jamie do you have anything exciting to share with us right now well, I'm in the midst of, um, I just released a um, LWB for an Oracle deck that will hopefully be coming out probably November or December with Los Garabeo. And I don't know how much they want me to talk about it, but it's um, based on the um, artwork of um, Alphonse Mucha. So that should be in their editorial hands right now. And I hope they like what I've done with the structure. I am currently working on another um, LWB for an actual tarot deck. This one, um, I'll give a hint, has the word steampunk in it. Sweet. Yep. Now, I Bev. think, hey, Bev. So I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the Mooka artwork is kind of like art deco and it's, renaissance kind of blend and kind of really pale, pat, not even quite pastel, mm -hmm. but just kind of washed out tones. Am I right? Um, kinda. It's it's actually Art Nouveau um, in, in that movement, which predates the Art Deco movement. But it deals with a lot of, um, yeah, it has like these flowing lines, um, curves. It At least for Mooka, it was definitely kind of more feminine-centric as far as the, the images of women's bodies, both clothed and unclothed. And... For some reason, I'm off. I can't tell if I'm on screen or not. Can you? Um, I hopefully, don't see people you can anymore. hear. There we go. There we, there go. we go. Well, um, you know, it's Jen messing with us. Probably up on you know, top of her mountain, trying to see what we can do. Yeah. But um, yeah. So it's it's a lot of that. Um, I know that it inspired Matt Hughes' um work. If you ever have the Ethereal Visions Tarot, he's done mm -hmm. that and the Dreamscapes Oracle. So it heavily, that style, the Art Deco, Art Nouveau period, definitely influenced his styles for deck creation and art in general. And so it's a lot of fun. But yeah, the Steampunk one, um, I am I just sat down to start writing it um, yesterday. So I've gotten a little bit into it, but it's fun. It's it's gonna be another um, creative fictional world that you know I like to create for some decks. Some decks have you know a fiction aspect like the Tarot Z that I wrote for. Others are just kind of like more standard. Here's you know meanings and and stuff. Well, I have to say that you know as a little bit of a fan, and I cause you go crazy when I say that. I know. Oh my god, it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird being you know, like when people come up, they're like, "I love your stuff," and I'm like, "I'm just a person. Come here, yeah, join the, us at the tarot table." But you, the the way that you approach these worlds that you create mm -hmm. for, whether it's a tarot or oracle deck, is just beyond you know. And Aww. I can get sucked into the book. Forget the cards. I mean, it's usually they're accompanied by beautiful artwork, of course. Yeah. But the book is so, especially tarot Z people. I don't even care if zombies on horror are not your your jam. Mm -hmm. Get this and read Jamie's book. Okay? They are. Like, yeah. Ten, ten, <laughs> 10 pages in, I was calling Jamie and saying, um, please tell me you survived this zombie apocalypse, please. <laughs> Which is funny. People think that, you know, I'm writing it in the first person. And I'm like, there are, there. I you know, to me, it was like, I, I look at like what I do in the tarot decks. Hey, Na Nathan. Nathan. Um, as kind of like at least the fictionalized ones and Tarot Z, I liked the idea of I had a loose base of, you know, like zombie apocalypse, but I pulled in all my knowledge because I do watch a lot of the movies, the TV shows, you know, podcasts, etc. So I was pulling in bits and pieces from various things, 
into, you know, like the world and trying to kind of piece vignettes of, you know, what happened, where, and, you know, everything. So it wasn't like, you know, one survivor's account. It was like all the stuff compiled, put onto a deck. And it kind of answers that question, at least for me, of I, uh, on my um, website for um, my, um, for my tarot business, Inner Compass Tarot, Ding, you know, um, self-promotion there. Um, I I wrote down that for me, I would, you know, if I was lost on a desert island, I would have something like, you know, my tarot tiles or a plastic waterproof deck because that's me. That's my world vision. Nothing like a knife, nothing like a hammer, you know, nothing like that at all because, you know, I'm not that, I mean, I'm practical, but I'm not. And so this kind of became a dream realized of, you know, survivors are, you know, given a tarot deck and said, read this, learn it, you know, and it'll help you survive. <laughs> so, yeah, it's amazing it was, it was, what uh, what tarot can do for our lives. Absolutely. OK, so is. Nathan says he was watching one of Arwen's videos and uh, we popped up on live notification. Hey. Hey, go us. <laughs> Sorry, Arwen. We love you. We love you, Arwen. Big love to Arwen. Mm -hmm. Hey, but aren't you doing something with Arwen? Speaking of that, I am actually. I think I have to check the date. Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. I want to say that it is the 11th, Friday the 11th. Um, I will be on live on Arwen's YouTube channel, and um, we're going to get up to all sorts of good trouble, I'm certain. Because that woman and I, when we get together, we just laugh forever. So, yeah, oh God! So, I mean, on Twitter, she and I are currently hiding under a rock with our friend Thalassa because <laughs> last because last night I um I I control well I have access to my account for Twitter, which is just Jamie underscore Elford, and then because I one third of the Card Slingers Coast to Coast podcast crew. We, um, I hopped onto that one because we have some new images and stuff. Oh my God, fangirling over the artist, um, our friend Amanda. And um, <laughs> I forgot that I was in that account and I started answering things as if it were me until I looked up and went, oh shit, I'm still answering as Carter Mancer. So I wrote down uh, my own thing. That feeling when, you know, the face bomb, awesome. you realize you're <laughs> answering in the wrong thing. So yeah, so we're, we're all currently hiding under a rock in, in the Twitterverse going, am I on the right account or not? Am and how I do in you the right this? place? What do I do? I know. Yes, I yes. Know. And you're right, Nathan, she is fantastic. She is just, she's, she's fun she's oh, i love hanging out with her and i hope that i hope i won't get to see everybody soon because this pandemic can just bite it i uh, no kidding no kidding so i'm sure we're all very it. exhausted but again that's something else that not just tarot but i think divination on the whole right and the esoteric mm -hmm. arts is something that if people are able to lean into those tools it's what's pulling us through um these last couple of years for sure yeah. i know it has for me um, you know, I, yeah, so, somehow at the beginning of the pandemic, I got roped into this wonderful little thing called the Carter Mancer magazine <laughs> and it's been my life and thank God, cause it's been a little saving anchor. Um, so no, I hear you. You've, you've done great as you know, the, the, uh, lead of our little crew in the hand basket, so to speak. No, and as you. you know, my boss and I, you know, spearheading, spearheading anything is hard. You know, I know that I've been with the magazine since its inception kind of, you know, like through the Jetsia days, through Arwen, through Lori, and now with you. Hi, Maya. But it does not talk to me the way that it does you. And I've honored that. Like, I got asked to buy the magazine. I'm like, it's a full-time job. And right now, I can't take that on as a full-time job. It is. It's a full-time job, and I love it, and it's a passion. And it does. It's interesting. I, You know, the, the Cardamancer has become a being for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it does, it does communicate with me and in interesting ways, you know, it has a way of guiding what information it wants to present and how that information is presented. And then of course so. we have Safira who is, oh my you know, God, constantly doing the most amazing graphic design on all the pages, you know, so it's yeah, like, it it's talks amazing. to her too. It, it absolutely does. And, you know, it's funny because she's often the one who gets the hit on the the Cardamans will decide a particular issue will kind of have like an overriding color theme and that's not chosen. It's just guided. And Safira is so tuned in with that. Mm -hmm. And she knows sometimes there are certain colors that I'm like, mm -hmm. 
but she's like, but the cardamancer said so. I'm like, okay. And then we do like we make yeah. the sign of the cross. Yeah. We bow down I mean, to, to the will of the magazine. I mean, look at this. I mean, that's our December cover. For those who don't know, who mm -hmm. haven't seen it, Wrong way. that way. Yeah. No, I, I'm just trying to point at you, and I forget that you know the screen is. It's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, just gorgeous. Um, yeah. Safira so says sometimes it screams, and then she went, "Daw." You know, she she's, yeah. she's she doesn't like it when we get all squishy about her because she's all no. you know, Scorpio and you know fire and stuff. And yeah, the screen's opposite. I keep forgetting. I'm like, left hand. I know. I have to keep hand. doing that too. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. 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 We yeah. are we are such like, you know, newbies when it comes to this. That, well, it's know, like I've sure. done a lot. We'll get a stern talking yeah. to from Jen at some point. I'm Probably. sure. Like, Ladies, the camera or, goes this way. No, it goes this way. Or Sit a class, Sit back. A class yeah. on it. You know, like when you yeah. hold the phone up, make sure you, you know, slowly and hold it for a couple of seconds. I don't know. Um, I mean, look, look I have to, okay, because we were just talking about Arwen, I have mm -hmm. to show this off. Okay, am I there? Yeah, we there? yeah, okay. you're in. Yep. So this is one of the little touches that Safira came up with for this beautiful piece that Arwen wrote, The Legacy of Words. And it's talking about how words are important to her and how they always have been. And Arwen's a writer. And to go back with this classic typewriter look and then find a font that looks like old type font type preset I'm, ah yeah. she's amazing we love her yeah. speaking of typeface nathan says has the typeface been updated uh nathan needs to catch up um can you t uh ask us a little bit more about what you mean about that typeface because i'm not sure if you're talking like about the body text or our logo or something right. but yeah yeah we all want the typewriter. We all love that steampunk style typewriter. I mean, I could use that right now to help, you know, write the words and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. yeah, Jen already is planning on talking talking to us about this. <clears throat> yeah. Um, kinda, Nathan. I think kinda. I know that Safira, who is in the chat, she can probably give you more insight if you want to know about how she's um, doctored up the uh, the logo. But um, yeah, we still keep with the Carter Mancer, um as itself as the logo or the Carter Man Mancer magazine. We we interchange both of those in and out. And, um, but we did add the tagline um, for this year called a metaphysical journal for uh, for diviners, right? I came up right. with it and I can't even freaking remember it. That's, that's how great of an associate editor I am. I'm like, I do these things and then we ship it. And I'm no, like, it, it was perfect though. And that's one thing yeah. I appreciate in the relationship that I have with everybody on the team of this magazine, because I can just say, throw words out to Jamie, like, um, I want a new tagline and maybe it should be something about a journal for metaphysicians and something about divination. And then Jamie's like, okay, I can fix that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm like, it makes us sound like we're doctors, you know, the journal for the metaphysician. And I'm like, that would be cool, but we're not, many of us don't have doctorates. So I just kind of tooled around with the words, threw it back. She threw it back. I threw more back until we found something we both like. Right. Right. Which is kind of and what happens when the three of us get together for um, when we're in, right now, especially for the spring issue, when we're we're in production mode, when we get into um, a lot of Facebook Messenger video groups with Safira showing us her screen. And then we, you know, tell her, you know, don't use Comic Sans and all that stuff for the font because, you know, <laughs> we're, we're more professional than that. <laughs> Yeah, but I Nathan, love that I get to throw people under the bus. I know, I know. But because Nathan was asking <laughs> specifically about the logo, mm -hmm. the logo itself did change in 2020. Um, and that was one that you might have seen that was more um, red, black, and gold. And we do still use that color. So we have now updated it to our what we call our rainbow logo, um, which is more fitting um, for our team and the image that we want to present and our feeling of being able to be um, an inclusive and safe space for people. And then a little extra behind the scenes about the logo itself, um, the C, is it derived from um, an idea I had about Athena's bowl bow. So if you, if you kind of tilt it slightly, you can see that, that that C almost does look like bowstrings being pulled back to release um, Athena's bow. And um, Safira definitely came up with um, the perfect font um, 
to help that. And no, that's not something that's extremely obvious, um, but it is one of the layers that we put into what we do. And every issue of this magazine has layers built into it. And as you start taking the time to unpeel those layers, you'll see it. Um, and it'll be um, those themes and those little, those hidden things. And the Easter eggs will <laughs> come through um, brilliantly for you. And it gives you a deeper appreciation, not just for the magazine, but for um, each of the contributors um, and the articles that are in there. You know. I think at one point, um, either in the autumn uh, 2021 autumn issue or this legacy December issue, I think I was like, it's almost, I mean, yes, it's bibliomancy, you know, if you use a book to, you know, divine, but in a way, the Cartermancer can be a divination tool in and of itself with all the pictures, the text, the words, and all those layers that we add into it that um, I know some people, um, especially one of our friends, Pamela, you know, she rereads this. It's almost like she's got her little, you know, quarterly, you know, Bible, and then she just rereads things. And every time she rereads things, she gets deeper into it and we're like okay you you got that you know kind of like the wow you know it's amazing how much people pull things out yeah yeah um, and nathan that's okay it's fine to be you know four or five issues behind i mean we always have the um digital copies you know up for sale and everything at least the ones that we can through amber's um ownership um as far as print copies, I don't know if um, there are some June copies that are released into our store in print, and there are still some December print copies available. And then, of course, um, the spring issue will be going up for sale in the next month or so. Speaking of the spring issue, did you want to give them a little taste of what's going on? Should I? I don't, I don't know. know. Jen, do we have your permission? Safira, is everybody in on this? Do we need to have everybody in on this? <laughs> no. No, I'm a Leo. I can do well, what yeah. I want. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's the other secret you know, ingredient is that we're both Leos and somehow we haven't, you know, killed each other. Yep. Jen no. says do it. So we got the blessing okay. of Jen. All right. So. If Jen said so. Okay. So some people have seen... Um, the cover that as we released it online, but here we go. These are the flat print proofs that um, Safira and I have printed out for each issue. And from that, that's when we start our first bit of proofreading. And we start, and it's not just the proofreading itself, but we look for the color balance. Uh, we look to see if how we thought the layout was looking in our minds and in the digital version is actually looking, transferring well to print. because it, it, They are two different beasts. Um, and sometimes something you think looks great on the screen in a digital version just is not carrying well into print. And we want to keep mm -hmm. a certain level of, of consistency and professionalism and our look, our look and our energy behind everything. And, so and getting that. that stuff for digital and print, you know, at, on the, you know, quote unquote, the same page is kind of hard as somebody that used to do a lot of web design and, and print graphic design. It can be a nightmare sometimes to get everything to match. Yeah. So I love that you, you both were able to do that. I come in after, well, I mean, I kind of, you know, help them with this process, but I don't get a copy. What I get when I do the kind of like the final blessing is that our printer kind of runs us a small test batch. And then we all three go through that and we look, we look really closely and, and like every word, make sure everything's spelled right. Everything, um, all the XX, you know, see reference page XX or whatever is all corrected. And of course, sometimes we miss things because when you look at the microscope so close, you kind of miss some of the stuff. And that did happen with poor Amy's fireside chat when we were like, need to add date and time here. And we never did. Oops. Oops. Which is why we're here. No, um, <laughs> it's penis. But the fireside chats, now that we've not, you have that just a little slight, slight segue, um, they're going to be um, the third of the month at 3 p.m. Eastern, which is 12 noon Pacific. Um, and then Amy's going to get on and we just dive deep into either her entire article, um, into pieces of her article, the general theme. And if she has 
created a spread within that article, then we go in and we work with the spread because we don't want people just to read the pic and you know, look at the pictures and read the words. We want you to work with it. We want this to be interactive yeah. and we want to have those conversations. You know, we would love people to post, um, you know, and tag us and say, Hey, I've been working with this and the spread just isn't quite hitting it for me. You know, it, do, can I have insight, you know, because that's mm -hmm. how we need that feedback to keep growing. Or you can post it and say, this is wonderful. This changed my life. And, um, you know, y'all should be, you know, giving a Pulitzer. So. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> having a tarot magazine be given a Pulitzer. Um, so, so Nicole says she loves the cover. And if you can hold that cover up one more time. Um, the cover is the Ace of Wands from the Shadowscapes Tarot by Stephanie Pullman Law. And it's published by Llewellyn and you can get it either in the nice bigger, you know, box size where you get a thicker book or you can get it just as a normal little slip case with just a thinner LWB. But yeah, I love her artwork, the foxes. They're so expressive in the deck and they're all in the wand. So once again, it's uh, Shadowscapes Tarot. Shadowscapes Tarot. Yep. And then I was just going to show a little example, like as we start doing our edits, see, that's when the highlighters come out and all of the <laughs> the permanent the markers and the lines and making our little marks everywhere. Yep. And all the notes that we need to change this, we need to do this. Yes. I know Safira, doesn't Safira use like, you know, tags, like, um, you know, stick it post-it notes, you know, does she like tag things too? She does. Yeah. Like she's got she her own system. Yeah. It's so fun to watch everybody's editing system because I know like, they, you and Safira do something different than like I do. Like for me, it was always, you know, well, I was doing it digitally. And then when Amber's like, I can get you a print copy. And I was like, sure, that's <laughs> not too much trouble. And so now I've switched from doing it digitally on my iPad with an Apple pencil, which is kind of fun for that because I can, you know, go in and, you know, circle and make notes as well. But now I do it on print because it's fun to, you know, see it on the print. And so if you're like wants to add for her process, she uses metallic pens. So, yes. Shiny, yeah. sparkly. Yeah, we like we like the sparkly, you know. Um, I think that's you know, a lot of us, right? We love those supplies. We yep. love our pens, we love our colors. So yep. we might as well use them. And my my spotlight just decided to die. So you just get me kind of in my natural lighting. It's now. okay. You look yep. all right. You look okay. yes. Yeah. I, I always I have the entire backlog um of the Carter Mancer in digital. And I do have some, um, well, now that I get them for the, you know, preview, I keep them on a shelf of all my publications, which is a, somebody, a writer told me once that if you do publish things, you know, decks, oracles, et cetera, if you're a writer or designer, keep a shelf in your bookcase full of all your stuff, because it, it helps you remember how far you've come and what you've done. And it's nice to kind of see all the, what I jokingly refer to the dead tree editions, you know, that you have. But I have the whole collection of Cardamancers in in um, digital because I, I'm also kind of a historian on that aspect. You're and the Cardamancer archivist. Many of them. I am. I'm like I'm like the Cardamancer historian. I mean, I've got all these stories, you know, and insights into the various stages. Which um, to me, I feel like we're in the fourth epic, you know, or epoch of you know the the life cycle of the Cardamancer, with you being the the fourth owner. Yeah, yeah, the fourth owner. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy. Jen, that shelf is not going to be empty very long. It's not. It's <laughs> not. I mean, put it this way, you know, it's like, um, I I mean, I'm, well, as a Leo, I'm one of those that you dangle the publishing carrot in front of me. I'm like, okay, and I'll do it. So I'm, 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 I'm that person. But um, yeah, it'll fill up. And especially with your decks, once they start going to translations, ooh, that's even cooler because, you know, sometimes you'll get the translated copies like Tarot Inspired Life, the book I published with Llewellyn in 2019 Did is in Russian. Yeah, it's in Russian and it's so neat. That's so cool. That is so it's hardback cool. and it's got a ribbon. Yeah. I mean, oh, I love awesome. seeing world editions of stuff. Yeah, that's very cool. All right, I'm also going to, okay, because I keep seeing people that we know pop up in our chat, which is wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for being yes. here. I have to I have to give a nod to our our, our house astrologer, Nicole Garceau. Yes. Yep, who's in here? She is in here. Cosmic Ripples, this is the, the series for 2022. Um, Jen, could you pop a link to um, Nicole's site in there for us? I would appreciate it. 
And uh, Nicole is amazing. And um, she has pointed out some incredibly fascinating factoids about the astrology from all of us involved with the Cartomancer. And um, it's really exciting. Very, I mean, a little mind blowing, mind bending. It, it is. Uh, like it's so interesting. Well, and even in the world, like, so um, we do have group chats. And, you know, it's funny, like, I think in one of our group chats, we describe Nicole as kind of like that, uh, the Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock, where, you know, he goes into his mind palace and does like, you know, all the numbers pop up and stuff. And you can almost just, you know, she does this, she she'll, will say something, and then she'll like, you know, spit out, type out or say, you know, a factoid about how our chart, how our space math, uh, you know, the space rocks and math show us that aspect. And we're just like, that's really cool, you know, or sometimes she'll get even deeper to where even though she's writing to us in English, <laughs> we understand the words, but we're like, you got to, you know, you got to bring it up a little bit because I, you know, at least for me, I, I call myself astrology dangerous. Like I know enough to say, you know, watch out Mercury retrograde, but I don't know the <laughs> the the knowledge behind it and stuff. So, you know, it's like I, I tell people don't trust me on what I say. Trust somebody like Nicole because she's amazing. Yeah, yeah, we, we are definitely, definitely blessed with everybody that contributes and um, who is yeah. in our in our little circle and team. Um, and what's even more fun about Nicole is that she knows many different languages and is she, she's going to start posting her article or we're going to start hosting her articles in like French too, in right? French, yes. Yeah, on our website, um, the current articles will be we'll have a French translation on our website. So English in the print version, French on the website. And of course we still have our Spanish um, contributors and mm -hmm. Spanish language um, reviews and interviews and um, whatnots um, on our website also. So check that out. I also just today, I've actually started creating an events page on the Carter Manson website. Uh, so you can keep up to date on where we are. Um, mm -hmm whether we're talking or, or Jamie's doing a little, you know, book tour or Nancy Hendrickson's doing ancestral tarot healings, mm -hmm. um, where to go, what's going on. And then also some of the, the bigger events um, that, yeah. that we sponsor and are just you know, so fortunate to be a part of. Um, I think the next one coming up that we have is Tide yep. um, in and Dallas. The, and that's yep. in International May. Dallas experience. All right, and then we have um, Witch City Tarot Gathering um, in Salem, Massachusetts, and that's in, in July. the end of July, right? Yeah, and then we we'll have second, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and then there's um, oh, let's see, what, uh, with Rachel Pollock in September, right? Mm -hmm. That's at um, Omega, the Omega Institute. Yeah. That's September, and then Newts in October. Yeah, which is the Northwest Tarot Symposium and that'll be here in Portland, Oregon. So for for locals, um, Nicole wants to know, is there an equinox gathering uh, spring or fall? And I'm not <laughs> sure. I don't know if we're going to have one. Um, I know that in March, supposedly here in Portland, there is an ALA, American Library Association, expo going on because I saw that Llewellyn was supposed to have a booth. I don't know if they're going to have a booth anymore, but um, I booked off the entire time and told uh, my the publicity folks at um, Llewellyn that I'd be happy to go sign my books or just be a rep, you know, a, a local rep since I'm here. Oh, that's right. No, I now I know what Nicole's talking about. Oh, <laughs> this is what, okay, this is brand new. So everyone who's in this chat, the first people outside our circle to hear about this. Um, Nicole and Pamela Bell from Pamela's Intuitive Heart Tarot will be teaming up together and co-hosting a little Equinox gathering and talking about astrology, doing some card pullings and card pullings, card readings. <laughs> and um, that is going to be um, the card events are sponsoring that. And we are going to secure the date and time of that and do all the posting all over the place. So Jen, get your little Instagram fingers ready. <laughs> We, um, she's probably way ahead of us. Once you know, we know, she's, oh, she's always ahead of us. And, <laughs> and so we're very excited about that. It's going to be a recurring um, a recurring segment with the Cartomancer, much like Fireside Chat when Amy is feeling better. And uh, I'm excited. We're just going to keep growing and, and doing these things. We're getting really good feedback when we, when we get together and um, just have fun chatting about 
things. Stuff. I think, I think we, you know, like I keep proposing this, that we, this, you know, us staff, I guess, I don't even know what to call it. You know, we're, we're just basically a group yeah. of folks that, that run this, but I, I kind of keep saying we need to like, you know, go up to Nicole's in, in who's based in Canada and just do a, a weekend of, you know, astrology for you know ourselves and then with the carter mancer because i know she's done this she has you know taken all of our um birth dates and all that and kind of done the maths and the science and and the the magic wizardry around it and to say why we're such a good team and i think i think that'd make a great a silly fun great conversation either you know in recording somehow or you know maybe a written article about how for the for a website you know and like this is how we work well together and how we are able to kind of mitigate everybody's challenges or, you know, um, merits and flaws and personality traits and why Amber and I probably haven't killed each other yet. Again, the mirror. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Working this closely <laughs> with Leo's. Oh, okay. And Nicole's Leo also. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so many Leos. working this closely with Leo, with, especially with Jamie as my associate editor. Um, it's pretty fascinating. I think for both of us, Jamie and I are pretty surprised that we haven't just kind of, I don't know. Yeah, like, like, like we've spent, um, we've spent a couple of days together last year, um, both where Amber lives and where I live here in Portland. And yeah, I mean, normally with, you know, Leo's, you know, we're, you know, it's like we are the head of the lion pack and we don't want to spend any other time with others, but yet we enjoy each other's company and it's quite, you know, interesting. We and we're like, Huh, when's the next shoe gonna fall? Yeah. But yeah, Safira said she um Nicole can also do astrology charts for business. So sometimes it doesn't have you know, astrology. I've even seen her do things for like situations or events, either globally or um, you know, personally type stuff. So it's just so much fun to see all the I mean, space space math to me is its own divination system and one that while I'm like, oh, I'd love to know tarot and 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 Carter Mancy kind of has my first heart and I know I'm hoping that I'm, it, it, I, I don't know if I truly believe in in past lives or next lives but if I do get to reincarnate I I might you know hello spirit you know maybe make me an astrologer next time so I can actually be able to play with all that and well, I have idea, to tell you I I got a, I got a pat on the back from from Nicole because I got a new car and I, I did my car's chart nice <laughs> which is really cool i'm like oh that's why the car and i get along so well we understand each other <laughs> I, I sympathico. Do, do sympathico. you know you don't have to get the guido out or anything <laughs> um for me i do i do more um numerology you know um as it relates to tarot like you know my house numbers add up to 20 which is um the judgment card but it can be reduced down to two as the high priestess so i'm like okay i want this house you know and and like license plates i'll add that up and then you know the to me that gives me the the birth dates of things so that's kind of how i work all that into me i love it i love yeah. it so many so things much you fun. can do so many avenues to go to there that's really is wonderful. And of course, you know, we write all about it. Like I was thinking about taking a step back from, you know, writing heavily for the Cardomancer this year, uh -huh. because I know that we have, well, you know, associate editoring or doing the day-to-day -day in and out things that Amber has to do combined with, you know, we're, um, we have per uh, things going on in our life personally. And they're not bad. They're all good things. But I know that she was going to need a little bit more of a step up for me behind the scenes and then and then she tells me what she's going to write about for for like summer for our um uh twos issue and i was like damn it i want to write this article for it so you know i'm kind of i'm kind of doing that i'm trying to pull back to give everybody else some space but then you're again like i said i'm a writer words come first dangle the carrot oh jamie well you didn't dangle the carrot i mean like it's funny because like you know oh god it was like during elliot's chat or our monday's chat with jen um, you said something, or I said something, and I said, this would be make a great article. And then Amber's like, uh, give me a proposal. And I said, I thought I just did. You know, it's, you know, we're trying to get everybody to, you know, propose things, to, you know, do a little bit of um, investigation first to send us uh, how they, what style they are and how they write and, and kind of get, I mean, the business of writing is a good thing to understand. A lot of writers don't realize that writing has a business, you know, from, you know, taxes to, 
to publishing to correct standardized manuscript formats. And the benefit of writing for a magazine up front is to learn some of these standards so that when you take your idea, develop into a, you know, um, 60,000 word book, you'll kind of have a leg up in some of the traditional publishing industries. Yeah. And so I encourage everybody, um, if you even think that maybe you have something you'd like to write about or something um, in the metaphysical genre, yeah, send, send, send a pitch to us. You know, you can gimme, gimme, get gimme. all the information on our website. We have a little submissions mm -hmm. tab and you can go there and click on it. It has all you, it has our style guide on there and um, just go ahead. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you're a beginner or a seasoned professional everybody everybody's voice and perspective is important to us and we want to get that out mm -hmm. there and that and that's another thing yeah pamela says write it yes everybody's like write it the you know a lot of fr um, a lot of my friends would be like well you wrote the terror book that i was gonna write i'm like so write yours because it's not necessarily the techniques that you're writing about the reason why i keep buying more books you know digitally and in print is because i want to hear other people's personalities i want to know what um perspectives they're bringing to the table. Because to me, books and magazines are conversations. Absolutely. And because see, see and Pamela's like, write it. Yes, see, Pam yep. Pamela. Here we go, Pamela. This was Ooh. a surprise. This was a surprise to me. I didn't know that they were going to be doing something with Tarot Inspired Life. So I, I felt like, you know, I'm like, I kind of wish I had a statement up there that says, I did not ask anybody to write this. This was, a, you know, this was a, you know, yeah. Yeah, one of those. It's going to make me cry, isn't Love it, Pamela? You, Jamie. Yes, it's going to make you cry. Mm. Pout. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's like, get the book. Yes, please. Please buy my book, Tarot Inspired Life by Jamie Elford at from Amazon, Llewellyn, or your local metaphysical bookstore because it's, well, I wrote it. It's fun. I like it. And um, I want it. I want more printings. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And, and yeah, Safira, yeah, as Safira says, because we're sneaky. Yes, the team, the uh, working with everybody, we, we kind of do things for each other. And we're really sneaky about some things. And we're silly about other things. And it's, we have a lot of fun. And hopefully that also comes out through the pages as well. You know, the love and attention and the mistakes. Yeah, well, the mistakes are important because we're human. Mm -hmm. You know, it's life. Mm -hmm. Life is perfectly imperfect. And, you know, so is our magazine. Not and intentionally imperfect. <laughs> no. No. I mean, we're yeah, we're humans, we do our best. And I again I read somewhere once that um, you know, everything goes out with at least one mistake. And if it doesn't, then you know, maybe that's a sign. But you know, so, <laughs> because again, it stresses that we are imperfect and that there is a human on the other side. Yeah, vandalize it, dog air, dog air, use the heck out of the knowledge. Yes, Pamela. Okay, I have to share with everybody. I love, you know, trolling used bookstores, well, pre-pandemic. Yeah. And my favorite thing would be to come across the book that had somebody's, you know, handwritten notes in the margins or things highlighted or still kind of the dog-eared pages. Yeah. And I would get that copy of the book over like the more pristine looking one. Cause I'm like, <gasps> you know, it's like an insight to someone else's life. And oh, maybe, hey, if they thought that was interesting, maybe I should take a second look at that paragraph too. And oh, heck yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So those are my favorite. Those, those are absolutely my favorite. And speaking of something like this, so we were working on the December issue. And during that time, Amber came down and I took her to Powell's and we're in the metaphysical section and just looking around and Amber pulls this old book off the shelf. And then it, it was like a uh, water witchery or something. Well, well, like, yeah, water, water witching. Yeah, basically like, you know, dowsing for water or other techniques. And she opens the front cover and on the inside, there's this uh, kind of return address plate to it. And it said uh, wiser and antique books with an ad address for that store. And because New York, because we had just done a, um, we got an article on Samuel Wiser um, and his legacy. Um, they start Wiser Books started out as that bookstore. And so, of course, we bought the book because, yeah, yeah, the time Jen, Jen and everybody is like the time we both escaped behind the magazine. If you follow on Instagram um, that yes. like in November, we were we, we uh, made the joke that we escaped behind the desks and 
had shenanigans. But yeah, Amber bought the book because it was a piece of history and it was something that we were, you know, we would not have known, not have had we learned about the legacy that Weiser had. Yeah, yeah, their brick and mortar store. And, um, yeah, I still, I kind of get chills just talking about it. Right? And the book is like, it's it's on my nightstand because it's just, it's just so cool. It's just, I mean, the information it's, it's is history. amazing and it's history, but just, I'm just like, ah, oh, I feel so good. Well, and there was like, there was like a newspaper article in there as well. It was like somebody, yeah, like you know, someone pulled sheets out from, from a newspaper and stuck them in there because it pertained to the information that was in it. I yeah. mean, this book has geological information. So scientific um, studies backing up the metaphysics of dowsing for water. It, so it's just cool. amazing. It's, it's, so it, cool. it's so neat. So cool. And maybe I'll put, maybe I'll put some pictures up on my Instagram. I think you should. That'd be fun just to show people. And I, I mean, will. it is pertinent. That's that's the awesome thing that, you know, when you write in publications and stuff, you 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 become that legacy of the places you work with. And like we said, the Cartomancer is kind of this living entity. So everybody that has written before or owned it before and those that come after us, you know, eventually, you know, we we are all connected as like Cartomancer family. And when you delve, when it kind of spills out into your world, it's really neat to see just kind of how far that web of connection goes. Yeah, yeah. So I have to share a little a little story that Safira shared with me. She was out um, shopping last year at a clothing store. And um, the gal who was helping her, um, they had an exchange and Safira mentioned that she did graphic design work for the Cartomancer and the girl had a flat out fangirl moment over Safira going, Oh my God, you're that designer. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love so, it. I love it. But the fact that, you know, to be out there in public and see how much what we do affects people and how much it yeah. means to them. It, it's nothing. It's like we wouldn't be here without the other people. It's like we wouldn't be here without Jamie. Jamie's like this little lifeline of the Cartomancer all around. But from the beginning, from when the DeForests had it, you know, mm -hmm. 2015 is when it started. Yeah. Um, and then Arwen had it for a while. Um, and then me becoming the executive editor in 2020 when um, Seven Stones Publishing had it. And now to be the owner myself. Um, love it. I love it. I know it's been, God, seven years. I mean, if you think 20, you know, eight, uh, this is the eighth year. Eight year. Yeah, I can't, I can't. So this is why I don't space math because I don't math in general. I don't do math, but yeah, I mean, we're all connected and, you know, spilling this out, not to be all squishy, but you know, you never know how you're going to make someone stay just by like, whenever I see a cool mask, I'll thumb it up. Or, you know, like I, I always ask checkout counter, you know, cashiers, how are they doing? How are they holding up? Because you never know what everybody's going through. And just a simple thing of, hey, submit this to the magazine might change somebody's life. Right. It might be, you know, might, that person might become the next, you know, amazing Llewellyn author or Wiser article or US Games designer for Dex. Mm -hmm. And yes, Akira, it's always surreal. Like when people ask me to sign the books for Los Garabeos, sometimes because I'm a staff writer for them, I don't necessarily, you know, think that as mine, even though those are my words. But when people come and ask me to sign them, I, I go, okay, and then I do it. But yeah. 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 We got and a cool family. We got a cool yeah, and I, um, <clears throat> community. We do. We have, we have a cool team. Very cool team. And I think that what that helps is that we all have our experiences and then our own circle of experiences and our own circles of yeah. people outside of our cardamancer one. And that helps us bring in, you know, people that can talk about divination from their cultural perspective, mm -hmm. right. Or from their own personal human perspective, whether it's a queer perspective. Um, we have, you know, we have some amazing Latin American contributors yeah. Um, you know, coming to us and their experiences, you know, people in Venezuela have a very different experience, um, very much some some divination and spiritualism is part of their culture. However, their access to books and magazines and tarot decks or oracle decks or any type of divination system like that is very limited. So how they have incorporated what is just around them to use if they want those tactile pieces of divination. Um, and then where they're outreaching 
um, to get the information. So let's see. And, that, and some of that you can find in the um, summer issue, the 2021, where um, I can't remember, uh, Ricardo, right? That's that's the- Ricardo, and he, he has yeah. one. I just checked because he has them um, in the or is December it, or, or is issue. Or December. I can't yeah. remember. In the December, yeah. we have the Voices of Tarot, and that was- um, Is that the one that with the Venezuela? Okay. Yeah. 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 This is the one I meant. Sorry. It's yeah. December issue, not, not a uh, June, but yeah, that was intriguing to read. And, you know, again, it reminds us that, you know, um, we're moving, you know, bigger and Safira, I'm glad you asked that. Cause I was going to ask, you know, Amber that. So what if Safira says, what is your plan for the Carter Mancer moving forward? World domination. <laughs> There you have it. One day we're going to rule the world and you're going to worship the ground that us two Leos walk on. Right, right. <laughs> no. But seriously, um, some of my big ideas, my big ideas um, are to get an audio version of the magazine for the sight and for the vision impaired. Right? So have that more available. Have have the have the magazine and spoken word that that's huge and um nicole's helping me expand it linguistically um so we'll have different pieces coming up in spanish and french and hopefully italian soon <laughs> um just to have that that variety of ideas and well and it's um, also a global it reminds everybody that, that cardamancy is a global phenomena yeah, and I want to, like I said, I want this to be a really safe place for people that they can share ideas openly, even if they're a little nervous going, you know what, Jamie, what you think about that moon card? I don't like that at all. That's not what I think okay. about it. You and know? then I'm going to say, t show me, tell me, because, you know, I like learning new perspectives. Bring yeah. it. Yeah. Bring your voice. And that, that's what we want. We want people to feel comfortable if they have, if they think they have an idea that might challenge the norm you know, or these crazy prescribed dogma of what you're supposed to do in this world, because that's not what it is. Um, and maybe I want there to be that base. I want that to be a really mm -hmm. good grounding base for everybody. So. Maybe that should be my new my my new job position. The let's <laughs> let's let's turn uh, tarot talk, aka TikTok tarot people on TikTok. Let's let's you know tell them no. I don't know or something. Yeah. You know, let's be the, <laughs> the voice of reason in the age of people not really wanting to look yeah, some stuff be. up or read. I don't know. Yeah, that, that, but, we might have to like actually have that as a topic for our next jamboree. That could be fun. <laughs> oh God, that could be fun. <laughs> and that can probably get a shut down pretty quick, but it again, you know, but it's, you know, the, these sort of deeper connections, like, you know, spiritual consumerism, um, you know, a uh, uh, cultural um, appropriation, appropriation. Um, these conversations, and I call it a conversation, because A, I don't want it to turn into a debate, but B, we need to have this stuff because it opens our mm -hmm. eyes and it gives us new perspectives. And there's never, I don't think there's fully going to be an answer. I mean, yeah. I and mean, you look at the politics in the United States, just, you know, there not everybody's going to be on the same page, but we, we do need to kind of talk about things and try and figure out a consensus. We do, yeah. we do. And I saw Jen make a little comment. Don't make me get lost in there again, because uh, we do have, <laughs> for 2022, we do have a new series and it's called Quarterly Queries. And what we do is that we take a topic from the metaphysical or esoteric world, which is huge, and but one that people have been asking us a lot about, or that's been mm -hmm. coming up in conversations a lot. And so Jen, I assigned Jen for the spring issue to look into star seeds. And Jen went down the rabbit hole of witch talk, getting information about star seeds. So look, here we go. We'll show the second page of that because that's pretty cool too. Wow. She she says um, it was something OMG. So I I don't, I haven't read that one. So uh, what also happens between the t um, Amber and I and some of the other editorial staff is that Amber sends us, you know, random or batches of um, um, pre-articles before we send them to layout and then we edit them first. And um, some of them I don't get to see. So it's kind of cool that when I get the, the final proof, I get to actually read through the ones that I didn't get to, you know, have or, you know, like, you know, or they didn't want me to see like a book review on the book that, you know, somebody, you know, you happen to write. 
And I love that Jen also says, and this for the quarterly queries was just the tip of the iceberg. So hopefully everybody uh, watching this and post and stuff will, you know, keep subscribing or keep buying, you know, copies as we produce them to see what's going on and all that. I know that we have possibly maybe 10 minutes left. So are there any other questions that anybody wants to ask us? Man. I know that while no. we wait, um, Amber, what are you? Is there, are you working on any new decks or book ideas for your own personal self? Um, I am working on a book for myself. <laughs> Ooh. And um, it's, um, it's somewhat like a memoir, but not exactly. So kind of going into, um, you know, the origins um, and everything that that's behind me and where the background, you know, what what birth what birthed amber <laughs> nice i like that yeah yeah because this is a spiritualism in there um and like some of my first experiences of you know, talking with and interacting with spirits and um, the nature world and everything so awesome yeah memoir is something that i've been curious to you know dip toes into i mean in a way when we write it is kind of memoir like I once had uh, Wald Amberstone from the Tarot School look at the Triple Goddess Tarot, which, well, again, I don't consider that my deck, but it was the first deck I actually did the direction on. And he started laying down cards and he was like, you know, I'm seeing a pattern here. And I'm like, stop reading me, you know? <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I look forward to seeing more on your project and then That's in the future, good. hopefully getting it published. So yeah, do, Nobody has any questions. Questions, for us. come on, folks. Questions. It's if amazing. not, I'm just gonna make Jamie play with her charms because you know ASMR. And Jamie, tell us about that wonderful bag. Well, um, I don't know if I can or not, but okay, Shh. it's a hint to someone in our community that makes bags, and this is a test case, so I get to actually test a bag idea. But um, more importantly, I know I can share what's inside these bags. Everybody loved them Monday, the sound. So um, we all adore Jamie Sawyer and her tarot tiles. And last year I backed uh, the charm cast. Um, that was not a Jamie Sawyer made object, but these are tinier than hers, but they're, they're on metal, so cool. they're on pewter. They have a clear back. Um, the creator of this actually uh, got talked into um, possibly doing this for jewelry. So they, you can buy a, a necklace that you can just stick, you know, whatever card you want. And um, I mean, I randomly pulled this. So here's the two of cups. They're basically <laughs> stick figures of the Rider weight, you know, tradition. And I love this because a, it's kind of again, it's tactile, it's metal, so it'll last hopefully forever. But b the stick figures help me because one of the things I'm trying to do is figure out how to kind of break the gender binary of cards since, um, again, this ties into my own personal life. But in general, I want to honor all, you know, diversity and of all, all of its shapes and forms. And so stick figures or the idea of stick figures kind of to me allows me to just say, hey, this figure does this or this person does that. Granted, it does have some kind of little gender cues, like um, the, um, the the emperor. I wanted to call him one of the kings, but, you know, yeah, professionals make mistakes too. But here we have the emperor, you know, and this is definitely more masculine or, you know, but I, I always just play with figures, that idea. Okay, what Pamela's got your, a question. What is your favorite non-tarot or astrology divination method at Amber and Jamie? Okay. Go for it. Non-tarot astro or astrology divination method. Um, pendulums. Pendulums, rocks. <laughs> um, and um, I do a lot of scrying, black mirror scrying and fire scrying. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'd You're going to have that. to bring some scrying into the magazine. I will. I will. Because and I have to speak to the fact that that first charm you pulled out there, the two of cups, mm -hmm. man, synchronicity, man. Okay. So for, here you go. Insider news, people, our summer cover is a very special um, depiction of the two of cups that was decided last 
September, I think, August or September. And it also happens to be tomorrow, plug, 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 on Tarot Takeaways on Instagram, on Soultopia's channel, I'll be talking with Michelle Welch about what? The Two of Cups. That's right. I forgot that you were going to do that. Um, that's at 11 a.m. Pacific, correct? It is, 11 a.m. Yeah, Pacific. Yeah. yeah, on the Soultopia Instagram live channel. And so we'll be able to, you know, hop over there plug questions and see if we can make Amber, you know, uncomfortable or not. I love that Maya says that she wants to take a tea reading class. Yes. That is something that I, I, I haven't, well, I've got a couple of books, but I haven't read them. Um, but I, you know, at some point, yeah, I want to do tea Nancy. Um, I, I love that Jen, you know, calls everything Nancy. So I love this idea, but, um, to answer um, Pamela's question about what is my favorite non tarot or astrology divination method? Oh, I like I Ching and I like my charms. And I don't, when I say charms, I don't mean like the tarot tiles or charms there. I mean, I have a collection a la Carrie Paris, who um, created, was the first to bring the idea of collection casting. She, yep, she's coming up. Um, who, who talks about that and created the magpie oracle, which is just random like necklace charms that you can, you know, collect, throws them into a bag. And at first she would sell them. But I mean, I bought a, a lot of those sets and then I kept adding to my own. And I find that um, me and a lot of other people, you know, when you actually start layering, combining these methods together, uh, charms and tarot is fun to do because you can um, do a quick one line reading from a card. Let's say that two of cups, you know, it's time to bring more love into your community. And then you just, you know, pull a charm on top of that. And you can answer another question, who, what, where, when, why, you know, right. or, or when, you know, so yeah. And yeah, like Jen says, you know, her, uh, she, you know, she, uh, she loves tea. Uh, readings and bones, bones as well. And the she bones. Also, oh, yeah. Jen, that's one of my favorites. I I did this when, when Amber was here. I I we we um I can't remember what it was from. What question I asked, but I had um, a small bone set that I did with Lupa, who um is at the Green Wolf, and um she had it's real simple, it's real basic, four different types of bones, and you throw them, and yeah. It was true. They, the reading came out true. And yeah, so it's amazing it what we can do. Was it? Okay. I couldn't remember. <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was about the writing or about um, like my 2022 plans, you know, quick, you know, <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's so much. I know that we have to, uh, we've got just a couple more minutes. Just a couple minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this Pamela, was fun. This was fun. Yeah. We hope that everybody like enjoyed listening to us yammer on and I know I had fun. So yeah, I enjoyed this. <laughs> Pamela's like charms, love, clever. Um, Safira says she loves Leonard Mon. She's not that great reading it yet, but has always, it has always drawn and fascinated her. Leonard Mon's one of those weird ones for me because every fucking, sorry, I just cussed, but every reading I've ever done <laughs> comes true. And I've done it mostly for those questions that I need, you know, where I need to have that kind of bluntness of you need to do this, you need to do this now type of a thing. So I'm also not very good at it. But again, when I pull these things in classes, because I usually, you know, I feel safer doing it um, at a convention. Yeah, things happen. And I'm just so I, I have it. But I just, yeah, it's one of those that I rarely use it. Well, thanks everyone for hanging yes, with definitely. us, and please send some uh, send some love to Amy Mauser and yep. um, yeah, love big hearts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do Kipper yet, Jean or Jean. Um, that's something I've it's never. Jean. Is it okay? Jean, Jean's my friend from Texas. Hey, Jean. I hope you're <laughs> staying warm down there. <laughs> but yes, you're all welcome for this chat and. Um, some point we're gonna have to have somebody write more about kipper i know that tony did for us for a while but might need some more kipper stuff i think so i think so but again thanks everyone for being here and hanging out and we'll do this again this is fun totally yep bye. thanks everybody have a great one bye